Okay, we're about um, text processing. This is one of the uh, common things that is done in computer programming. You'll have the user enter some text, or you'll get some text from a file or from some other source, and you'll have to do things with that text, such as modify it, um, replace characters, validate it. Also, things um, in dealing with individual parts of a string. Um, remember, a string is how a computer gets text. And you usually think of a string as inside double quotes. Visualize the computer keeping the information inside memory. Um, but secretly, we can think of it another way because the computer is really treating this as an array of characters. We've had arrays already, so you might need to review that chapter, but uh, just realize that with most computer languages, you can treat a string as an array of characters. So in this example, uh, we could also visualize this as something like this. I made one extra box here, but there would be one box in the array for each letter or each character, including a space, in the string. Now, if you access one individual location in this array, you have two subscripts. So the entire variable would have a name. I didn't assign a name to this one up there, but the entire, entire variable has a name, the string variable. But that string variable, you can also use that name with the square bracket there to access individual characters in that string. If I did str0, this would output just the letter A. If I did print str8, that would be out of bounds. There is no 8, so that would be legal. Right. With, with um, Python and most programming languages, the index numbers or the subscript numbers start with 0. There are some programming languages uh, that start the index at number one, and that's what Raptor does. So just that's something to be on the lookout for, the index number started zero or one. Um, and remember when we did arrays, we all talked about using loops, because loops are very effective, efficient ways to go through each index number in the array. So we might need to review that if, you, if you've forgotten it. Look at your old program that you've done. But this is really the heart of what's, what, this program, what this chapter is about. And then the, the book also introduces some library functions. Uh, and remember, the book is just talking in general. They give you a list of some common string functions on 12-1.
A lot of programming languages have some similar to those. To find out if the that you're working in has it, you would have to consult documentation. You'd have to look it up online or go to the help. And Raptor and Python don't have all of these, and they don't all work the same way. So it's good that you see that how, they, how they can work, but it's also good that you see that the language is going to be a little bit different as to what built-in library functions they have you to work with. The substring is one of them, and, and deleting strings. A lot of questions uh, on your chapter questions this week had to do with that. Um, but I'll leave you the understanding of the book to to you, because you can read many times you need to. And it's, it's a pretty short book uh, chapter and slide presentation. So review those. I'll go in to um, to Raptor and Python and show you some areas out for. So let's take a look at the um, at a program exercise. There's video notes for the first exercise, so I won't do that one. But uh, just remember, with all of these, there's many ways you can do them. So the video notes might show you one way, but you come up with another way on your own. You could use a while loop. You could use a for loop. You could use a for each loop. Um, there's lots of different things you do, so I won't do that one. Um, could do sum of digit string or vowels and consonants. Let's take a look at what else we got. Phone number translator. Maybe I'll, I'll try to include a, uh, a variety of skills uh, or a variety of skills that you'll be able to use in solving solving all of these, maybe or at least of them. But uh, how about I do some of digits in a string? Because this is going to highlight a few, a few specific issues. This is going to highlight some specific issues, and I'll touch on how to maybe how to output it words real quick. So I'll I'll touch on number one as I do as I do number four. So I'd like to start in in Raptor because Raptor is good for generally thinking about programs and coming up with solutions. Uh, although you see there's going to be some specific issues raised with text processing and how they handle a little bit differently. So it's not going to be as seamless transition between the two uh, for this chapter. We'll see how it goes. A uh, program that asks the user to enter a string. So you could, you could still do the I.O. where you sit down and think about the inputs, the processing, the outputs. Maybe some of it's starting to come as nature to you. I'm not going to spend a lot of time now, but remember, it is very important to sit down with the problem, make sure you're very um, clearly understanding what it needs to do, uh, what it should look like, uh, how it needs to work. So I've, I have done that already. I'm going to count on you to do that. So you can pause this if you need to, to do it some more. But, um, we want the user to enter a string containing a series of single digit numbers, nothing separating them. Okay.
And as you know, I'm a big proponent of starting things very small, making sure they work, and then building them. You should always have something that works. So this is easy. We've been doing this all you all sir. An input, an input symbol uh, prompting the user, giving them all the information what the program does, and it's the result of what they enter as uh, a variable called numbers. Now, what was introduced this chapter is that secretly, the computer is treating this variable as an array of characters. So it means we should be able to do this. Remember that router treats arrays, it starts the end numbers at one. If you had done a zero, it would have given you a problem. So even though numbers isn't an array, numbers is just a variable that we're getting here, I could do like an array to just output the first character in it here. So I do, I entered um, the word test, and the output uh, is the letter e, the first letter in that string entered. And that was fine because I did a, I did a word, but you're gonna see this program wants to do numbers. And I'll show you the problem that you might experience if you, if you try this one. Okay, it says number is not a one-dimensional array. So what is going on here? What's going on is the raptor, we have to tell it a data type. We don't have to tell Tana a data type either. But um, the, the reason why we get this error, we do a number and, and not doesn't have any letters in it, is that Raptor automatically assigns a data type based on whatever gets entered. We have a way of controlling how the computer treats input in Sun uh, by using either the key input or the keyword raw input. If we use the word input, then the computer is going to treat that as a number. And if we use raw input in Python, it's going to treat it as a string. We don't have that flexibility in Raptor, and we don't have the ability to assign a certain data type. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky in Raptor. Um, to treat our variable as a number, we would have to enter, or as a string, so that we can access individual elements, you have to input with, um, with quotation marks. And this is in the input section of your learning tool. I also changed my index number to two because the quotation marks I entered here do actually get uh, counted as being part of that string. So this is nothing really new to you. We've been putting strings inside double quotes all semester. Um, now we just have to put the quotation marks input when we're when we're putting our input in so the computer knows to treat that as a string to access individual elements. So what would this string that I look that I entered actually look like in memory? Remember, it's really an array, and I call it numbers.
So numbers is in the array, or the name of the string. You can think of it as being the same thing. And since raptor starts out with index number being one, the uh, first thing that's part of that string is the double oak. And then since I, since I entered one, two, three, the number one is that subscript or index location to two is at three, three is at four, and the last double quotes at five. So if I wanted to, uh, if I want to output this backwards, touch on that one for those of you who were trying that program. If I want to output this backwards, what is the first thing that I would want to output? I could do it here, or I could start out putting here. There's, there's, there's no zero. If I want to start at the end of the, I would want to start at the end of the string to print this backwards. So the first thing I would on, want to output is the thing that's in the last location. So if I, I can go ahead and put the double, the double quotes if I want, or I could just start at this. So in this case, the last character is in position position four. So let's keep it real simple for now, and just make it work with this particular set of input. We'll try to modify it so it works with any input, and we'll try to make it work without a loop, and then try to make it work with a loop. We'll start simple and just get something working, and then build it. So if, assuming uh, that I'm always going to enter just three numbers. The last number will always be at position four. So that's the first thing that I want to So there we go. It is outputting them in reverse order. I had entered one three, my output was three, two, one. But that's only going to work with a three digit number. And also we have the exact same or a very similar line of code three times. Whenever you have the exact same or very similar line of code over and over again, it's a good idea to use a loop. We don't have much of a choice for loop in Raptor. It makes it nice and easy for us. Right, what is the only thing changing? The only thing that's changing in these, these commands is this number that's inside of the square brackets. So that's what we use a variable for. And what did those numbers represent? What were the four, three, and two? The numbers represented these numbers, four, three, and two. They were the int numbers or the subscripts of the array. likes to use index, so I'll just mix it up to make sure you understand the concept, and I'll use the word subscript. And where does, what was the first number that we used as subscript? We used four, so I have an assignment statement. Up. And then what happened? What, we went from four to three to two. Right? So how do we go from four to three to two inside the loop? So 
So by add loop, we were able to eliminate those lines of code that were identical. And eventually, it's going to also help us make it so that it works no matter how long of a string gets entered. But for now, uh, the last thing we have to do is just tell it when we want to stop. What question could we ask that when we answered yes to it, we would be done? We wanted to print when it was four, when it was three, and when it was two. So is, is subscript less than two? If the subscript is less than two, if we ask that question and the answer is yes, we don't want to go we don't want to go inside the loop anymore. Exciting, isn't it? Okay, so this code, the way it's written, is always going to work whenever there's a three digit number. But what if it's a long number? The longer number, our array is going to be longer. We might have a four here, we might have a five here. Could have a six here. So we, we might not know how long this string is. Right? The user could enter anything. If only there was a way for us to tell Raptor that we wanted to start our first one, not necessarily at location four, which we did before, but we want to start it at the one before the last one. In this case, because we don't want to process the last one because it has the quotes in it. We want to start here. If you remember from the arrays chapter, there actually is a way after to do that. And there's a way in every programming language that has an array, there's a way to tell the size of it. There's the length of built-in library function, and it takes as an argument an array. But since we know that a string really is an array as far as it is concerned, we can use our string name here. Somebody length of numbers. Length of numbers, and you could use the help in Raptor to, to look up how length of work in or go back to the arrays module and look it up. But it's going to give you this number. So how many total boxes there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight boxes. So the length of this A is eight. And where do we actually want to start? We want it to seven. So I'm going to do length of numbers minus one. Our end condition is going to be the same. We always want to keep going until the subscript is less than two. We don't want to process this one for this particular example. So I'm going to go sub less than two, and this is going to this is going to work fine the way it is. Okay, so this loop, these, this thing, where we start out setting the subscript to set what we want, 
and then we have a condition to make it pop wherever we want, and then we increment or decrement the subscript. And this is how we go through an entire entire array, which in this case is really a string. Um, but this isn't doing what I want to do. This is doing the this is doing the number one. So I really want to uh, add up numbers. It doesn't matter if the number is going forward or backward. Uh, I can leave it the way it is. I can change it to get get them forward. If I wanted to get them going forward, I start. I would start out at subscript two, and I would end when the subscript is equal to the length. Or I want to continue. Yeah, that would be fine. That would work. Or I could say as long as the subscript is less than the length. Either one. Instead of just outputting them, I want to add them, add them up. So this is this is nothing new. You're just combining things you've done before. I can use the A name with the subscript square brackets anywhere where I could use a variable. So that's really what I want to do here is uh, I'd use an accumulator. I want to keep on adding to the sum whatever the sum had been plus the number that I'm looking at at that location. And this is perfectly logical, and uh, everything you read in the book uh, would lead you to believe that this would work. But actually, we're going to have a problem. Sum is zero. That's not right. It entered one, two, and three. Why did I get a zero? Start out with a subscript of two. I could do some. I could do some testing here to sure that it, you know try to figure out what was going on. So, and you see it didn't output that, so I know it didn't go into the loop. So I have a, a problem with my loop condition. Subscript starts out at two. I want to continue. Subscript, I want to know if it's greater than the length of verse or equal to. Okay, this is the error I was expecting. Unknown parameter for plus. And this might take you some take you some thinking about to um, try to understand what this error message means. All right, here's our here's where we're using plus. What do we know about the plus symbol in in after? It can be used to concatenate two strings. 
and it can be used to add two numbers. Right, we've seen a similar error to this in, in Python when you just take, if we just took something like this output statement and put into into Python, we would have gotten a similar error, right? It says that that plus doesn't know what to do because there's a string on one side of it and there's a num on the other side. And Python can't figure out what to do with that situation. Raptor is a little bit better about it. Raptor does uh, just concatenate this number after this string. But it can't do this. Right? Raptor has a problem doing this. It won't add a number to whatever number subscript is. So number subscript, it, it, we look at it and we see a number but the computer sees it differently. How does the computer see it? Look here, the computer sees sum right now because it worked the first time. The first time through sum had been zero, and then we came in here and we assigned to sum zero plus numbers. So it tried to take, or it did take first character in my array. It did take my one, but look how Raptor is playing it with a single quotation mark. That's because characters by computer programming languages are often denoted with single quotes. So technically, the number six is different than the character six to the computer, just like the string six is different than the number six. So the raptor is seen number one as being a character. The character one, not number one. And it can't add characters. It could concatenate characters, but that's not what we want. So most programming languages have a way to convert characters to numbers. Uh, Python does, we'll take a look in a minute. C plus plus and Visual Basic do. Java does, but I haven't found anything in here that does that, um, as I note in the input section of the learning module. So the only thing I can think to do until we come up with a solution is we check to see what that number is, what that character is, and then create a number. And it won't be pretty. Um, but I'll do one of them for you just to show you what I'm, what I'm talking about. And then you'd have to do a, a bunch more. But I'm going to complete it just to, just to give you an idea how it works. This would have just come a problem later. I switched it around to start with the subscript at the smallest spot, and I want to go up, so I had to increment this. What I'm doing here is I'm checking to see if the character that I'm looking at is a one. Uh, so the character that I'm looking at is the array element. I'm seeing if it's equal to the character one. That's why I've in single quotes. If it is, I want sum to get sum plus one. If it's not equal to one, I could put another selection over here to see if it's equal to character two.
So now that works. One plus one plus two plus two is six. Now if I wanted to work with three, four, five, six, and eight, and nine, I'd have to continue this out. And then there might be a way to do the conversion in, in Raptor. If there is, I'll post it to the input special learning module, but I haven't come across it yet. So this is a rather ugly solution, but it, it got the job done. Uh, let's look at the same problem in uh, in Python. If we can identify any potential problem areas. Then. Remember, Python does have a way of we can force this to hold a string being raw in. And as always, I like to start small, make sure it's working, and then start building. Okay, so that wasn't so bad. I just use raw imp numbers, then I test what's the new concept from this chapter is that I can use a subscript with that variable name to, to break it apart. And remember that Python starts at zero, so if I go back to my illustration here, I have to redo all these numbers, and we don't need the double quotes. But you have to, I and mean, it's going to make your life so much easier if you take an, an illustration like this to follow through, uh, follow through what's going on. I'll do what I did with the last program is I'll quickly do a, a, an example to print them backwards, and then I'll do the, um, the getting the sum of them. So if, if again, if I knew that it was going to be just three characters, if I knew it was just going to be a number that was three numbers long, I would do this. Now, it did do them backwards, but it put them all in the same line. So one of the things that um, you might want to do for these program exercises is just put those on the same line. And here's a way to do that. So I, I typed in three, two, and so the reverse was one, two, three at that time. And on the same line, it did put a space in between them. It's still uh, pretty nice. But again, this is only going to work when it's three numbers, and it's um, the same or almost the exact same line of code over and over again. So when we have almost the same line of code over and over again, we know that it's a good time to use loop. Uh, what kind of loop you choose, you got more choices in Python, but that's okay. You just choose any one you want. Uh, there's the for, the for each, the while. Uh, I'll do a while. This one just to demonstrate. You can do any kind you want.
All right, we went from two to zero. So I want this loop to continue until the subscript is less zero. So as long as the subscript is greater than or equal to zero, we want to keep on going into loop. Uh-oh, this is called an infinite loop. Remember, it's real important to do something inside the loop that changes the loop condition. Oh, not plus one, we want to do minus one. So by doing it without a loop first, and by making that illustration, it became a pretty simple program. Uh, but again, this one is only looking uh, for a digit number because we're always starting to subscript it to. But as we did in Wrapped, we know that there's going to be something within the library where we can figure out the length of the whole string. So it doesn't won't matter how long it is. Now, with the lin function in Python, we are going to get how many boxes there are, total length of whatever is entered. In this example, um, well, here, let me make another box here. All right, because Python starts with the subscript zero, we're starting here. But how many boxes are there now? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine boxes. The length of this array is nine. But what is the highest subscript? That's really where we want to start with this, because that's the first thing we want to output. We want to output whatever at the last position in the string if we want to print backwards. So we want to do the length of the string minus one, It'll always be one less than the length, the highest subscript in Python because Python starts with a zero index, a zero subscript. No problem, right? We said we wanted to add up all those numbers, so I'm going to do verse. Again, I'm going to switch this up instead of going backwards. I could continue to go backwards for this summing problem, but just to further have an exercise in logic, if I wanted to go through these in order, what's the first one I'm going to start with? I'm going to start with zero, right? I'm going to increment the subject each time. And why, when, how long do I want to continue? I want to continue while the subscript is less than the whole length. Think about it. In this example, the length nine, the last time we wanted it is when it was eight. We go until it's the length minus one or 
you know, length minus one, you can just say as long as the while the subscript is less than the length. Let's just make this works. But we want to just print them. We wanted to get a sum. And then after we've gone through the entire loop, that's when we want to output the sum. Just like we did in Raptor. We had an output statement outside of the loop. We want an output statement outside of the loop in Python. This is going to do that. We need to still make it more user friendly, but. Um, Let's see if this works. Remember, we had an issue in Raptor because Raptor was treating each individual element of the array as a character, and it wasn't letting us use addition on the character. Let's see if we have a similar problem I thought or not. Sure enough, unsupported operand type for plus, int and string. So it knows that sum is an integer, and it's treating this index location, treating this element in the array as a string, not as a character, but still as a string. So we have the same we have the same problem in essence. And I told you before that most languages have a way to convert data, and we've actually done this one already Python earlier in the semester. So Remember, you might have to look it up. You might need to Google search. You might need to send me an email. Get on Wimba Pronto, check with your classmates, and like that. But the issue, here, hopefully, you understand from that error message, is that it doesn't know what to do with this plus symbol because you have a number on one side and your string on the other side. So the hard issue is, and this is going to happen in every programming language, is you have to figure out how to convert data type. And there's a different way to do it in every programming language. All right, so I did uh, two program exercises. I did the number one and number four, basically. And number one was what, four lines of code or something. Number four here is seven lines of code or something. Not a lot to them. Um, you want to use your comments, of course, and you might enhance them a little bit. But if you understand the concepts, it's a lot of work. Right, you just have to read, you might need to do some research, but um, check the language companion, check all the other items in the input section of learning module, and uh, the little issues won't take you too long. There are a bunch of other library functions that you could try to throw in for fun, or you might need to use for some other program exercises, but uh, again, if you're planning on going on with computer programming, challenge yourself, do some more program exercises, do some harder ones. If this is the only programming class you're ever going to take in your life, you know, just do whatever whatever can work. And if, there's, if it's still not fully, you, know, you should have it working to some extent. Uh, you might need to modify what you tell the user. You might say, um, this is only work with you know, when you hear this type of format or something. Um, but just get some work in, get something turned in, and uh, finish on. We're going to start doing some fun programs, some different uh, program languages here in the next couple of so. All right, I'll stop the recording. Uh, email me at any time if you need anything.